Let's wind the clock back 20,000 years to a mammoth hunt, the first recorded human activity in the region we now know as France. Enter the Neanderthals, the primal thrill of the hunt pulsating in their veins, their collective tribal effort a testament to their determination to survive. Yet they weren't merely hunters. They were artists, leaving behind captivating cave paintings as a testament to their creativity. As time passed, the Neanderthals were succeeded by the Cro-Magnon. This new breed of humans were more refined, more innovative. They crafted tools, built communities, and continued to express their experiences through the medium of art. Then came the Gauls, Celtic tribes that settled in the region infusing it with a new culture, language, and technologies. They were fierce warriors, known for their bravery and skill in combat. From mammoth hunts to Celtic warriors, the early history of France is a thrilling saga of power, revolution, and culture. This is merely the prologue of our journey through time as we decipher the rich tapestry of French history. Stay with us as we delve deeper into the annals of history, the rise and fall of empires, power struggles, and the birth of the nation we today call France. The Romans, led by none other than Julius Caesar, swept into Gaul in 58 BC, marking a new chapter in the history of France. This was a time of conquest and change when the Roman Empire extended its mighty reach into the heart of Europe. Gaul, as France was known then, was a rich tapestry of tribes and cultures. The Romans, with their superior military tactics and relentless ambition, overpowered the Gauls, forever altering the course of their history. The Roman influence was profound. They introduced their language, Latin, which would evolve into the French we know today. They built roads, bridges, and aqueducts, some of which still stand as a testament to their engineering prowess. The Romans also brought their legal system and administrative structures, laying the foundation for a centralized state. But all empires must fall, and the Western Roman Empire was no exception. By the 5th century AD, it was in decline and Gaul was left to fend for itself. This marked the onset of the Middle Ages, a period characterized by feudalism, a system where the king granted land to his most loyal subjects, the nobles and knights, in return for their military service. The Middle Ages also saw the rise of the Catholic Church as a dominant force. Christianity, introduced during the Roman rule, had taken root and the Church was now a powerful institution. It influenced every aspect of life, from education to politics. Monasteries and cathedrals sprang up across the land, becoming centers of learning and culture. This was a time of knights and castles, of chivalry and faith. It was a time when the Church and the nobility held sway, shaping the destiny of the nation with their beliefs and battles. The fall of Rome gave way to a new era in France, one marked by knights, castles, and the unstoppable march of the church. The Roman conquest and the Middle Ages, each in their own way, shaped the France we know today, laying the groundwork for the chapters yet to unfold in this captivating tale of a nation. In the 17th and 18th centuries, France became the epicenter of a philosophical and cultural revolution. This was the Age of Enlightenment, a period of intellectual fervor that swept across Europe, with France standing at its center. This was an era when philosophers and scholars began to challenge the established order, pushing the boundaries of human thought and understanding. Two of the most prominent figures of this time, Voltaire and Rousseau, hailed from France. Voltaire, a tireless advocate for freedom of speech and religion, used his sharp wit and biting satire to criticize the Catholic Church and the French monarchy. His writings inspired countless others to question authority and seek truth through reason. Rousseau, on the other hand, was a champion of the common man. He believed that society corrupted the innate goodness of humans, and he advocated for a return to a simpler, more natural state of living. His ideas on education, social contract, and the general will would go on to influence the French Revolution and the development of modern political and educational thought. But let's not forget the opulence of the French court under Louis IV. Known as the Sun King, Louis ruled with an iron hand, transforming Versailles from a hunting lodge into a symbol of absolute monarchy. The court of Louis XVIII was a spectacle of grandeur and excess, a testament to the king's absolute power and divine right to rule. Yet, Beneath the gilded surfaces and elaborate masquerades, discontent was brewing. The common people were burdened with heavy taxes to fund the king's extravagant lifestyle and military campaigns, while the nobility enjoyed privileges and exemptions. This stark inequality coupled with the radical ideas of the Enlightenment philosophers 
began to sow the seeds of revolution. But even as the Sun King basked in his glory, a storm was brewing that would shake France to its core. The Age of Enlightenment was not just a period of intellectual advancement, it was the spark that ignited the flame of revolution, setting the stage for a new chapter in the history of France. 1789, the year that changed France forever. Imagine a society on the brink of collapse where the common people are burdened by taxes and poverty while the aristocracy live in opulence. This was France at the end of the 18th century. The seeds of discontent had been sown and they were about to bear radical fruit. The French Revolution. The revolution began not as a sudden explosion but as a series of events sparked by financial crisis, social inequality and a lack of faith in leadership. The Estates General a legislative body representing three estates of French society, the clergy, the nobility, and the commoners, was convened in May 1789 to address these issues. But the commoners, representing the vast majority of the French population, found their voices suppressed. On June 20, 1789, these commoners, now calling themselves the National Assembly, took the tennis court oath, vowing not to disband until a constitution had been established. This was a pivotal moment setting the stage for a shift in power. Then, on July 14, 1789, an event occurred that would become symbolic of the revolution, the storming of the Bastille. This fortress, used as a state prison, was a symbol of the monarchy's absolute power. Its fall signaled the beginning of the end for the old regime. But revolutions are rarely smooth transitions. The French Revolution spiraled into the reign of terror, a period of radical political and social change marked by mass executions of enemies of the revolution. This period of fear and violence was only ended by the rise of a new leader, a man named Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon, a military genius, seized power in 1799, promising stability after years of turmoil. His rule would mark the end of the French Revolution and the beginning of a new era for France. The French Revolution, a time of chaos and change, gave rise to a man who would leave an indelible mark on not just France, but the entire world. A man of ambition and military genius, Napoleon Bonaparte reshaped France and Europe. With these words, we dive into the turbulent era of Napoleon. Rising to power in the wake of the French Revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte was a man driven by ambition. His rule, marked by relentless military campaigns and sweeping reforms, left an indelible mark on France and the world beyond. Napoleon's rule was a time of dramatic change. He introduced a set of civil laws known as the Napoleonic Code, which fundamentally transformed French society. These laws established equality before the law and secured property rights, changes that are still felt today. However, his ambition wasn't just limited to internal reforms. Napoleon's thirst for power led him to wage war across the European continent. His military campaigns, known as the Napoleonic Wars, were marked by his tactical genius and ruthless determination. However, his ambition proved to be his downfall. After a disastrous campaign in Russia and defeat at the Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon was exiled, marking the end of his rule. As Napoleon's era ended, France transitioned into the 19th century, a period that saw the restoration of the monarchy. But the spirit of revolution was far from quelled. The revolutions of 1830 and 1848 rocked the nation, each time shaking the foundations of the ruling class. These uprisings led to the establishment of the Second and then the Third Republic, marking another shift in France's political landscape. The 19th century was a time of great upheaval and change for France. From the rule of Napoleon to the revolutions that shook the nation, these events forever altered the course of French history, yet these were merely preludes to what was to come. As the 19th century came to a close, France stood on the brink of a new and devastating conflict. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. The 20th century brought with it unprecedented challenges and change for France. As the world plunged into the throes of World War I, France found itself at the heart of the conflict. The nation's northeastern frontiers became the stage for trench warfare, a grueling battle of attrition that claimed millions of lives. But France, undeterred, fought valiantly alongside its allies, contributing significantly to the eventual victory. However, the peace following the Great War was short-lived. Two decades later the world was once again engulfed in conflict, 
and France was thrust into the epicenter of World War II. This time the Nazi forces occupied France, subjecting the nation to four years of harsh rule. But even in the face of such adversity, the spirit of the French people never waned. The resistance, a clandestine network of French patriots, worked tirelessly to undermine the occupation. Their actions a beacon of hope amidst the darkness of war. When the war ended, France was left physically and emotionally scarred. Yet the nation rose from the ashes with a renewed sense of purpose. The post-war period marked a time of significant transformation, as the country sought to rebuild and redefine itself on the global stage. In the decades that followed, France embarked on a journey of decolonization, granting independence to its overseas territories. This process was not without its turmoil, but it reflected France's evolving understanding of its role in a rapidly changing world. The late 20th century also saw the establishment of the Fifth Republic, a new political system that sought to stabilize France's turbulent political landscape. Under the leadership of charismatic figures like Charles de Gaulle, the Fifth Republic brought about a degree of stability and prosperity that had long eluded the nation. But perhaps one of the most defining aspects of France's post-war history is its integral role in the European Union. As a founding member, France has been at the forefront of efforts to promote peace and cooperation across the continent. From championing economic integration to advocating for a common foreign and security policy, France's influence has been instrumental in shaping the trajectory of the European project. From the trenches of World War I to the bustling streets of modern Paris, France's history is a testament to resilience and revolution. As we journey through the annals of French history, we are reminded of the nation's enduring spirit. Each chapter from the triumphant to the tragic echoes with the voices of those who dared to dream, to fight, and to forge a path towards a brighter future. France's story, like its people, is one of strength, of determination and above all, of unwavering resilience. From its earliest inhabitants to its modern role as a global power, France's history is a rich tapestry of events and influences. We've journeyed through time, covering the compelling chronology of this fascinating country, spanning its prehistoric beginnings, its Roman conquest, the Middle Ages, the intellectual explosion of the Enlightenment, the tumultuous French Revolution, the grandeur of the Napoleonic era, and the trials of the World Wars. We've seen how each chapter of France's history has left an indelible mark on its present. The Roman conquest, for instance, brought with it architectural marvels, many of which still stand today, echoing the grandeur of a bygone era. The Middle Ages saw the establishment of feudalism, the cornerstone of social structure that would eventually pave the way for the modern French Republic. The Enlightenment was a beacon of intellectual progress, with France at its helm, illuminating the world with revolutionary ideas that continue to shape our philosophies today. The French Revolution, a testament to the people's power, birthed the concept of liberty, equality, fraternity, values that France and, indeed, the world cherishes today. Napoleon's reign, though marked by warfare, was also an era of significant reforms, modernizing France and leaving a lasting legacy. The World Wars, while they scarred the nation, also showcased the resilience and unity of the French people, shaping their national identity and reinforcing their place in the global community. The enduring impact of these historical milestones is evident in France's present. From its thriving cities echoing the architectural brilliance of the Romans, to its democratic values born out of revolution, from its intellectual prowess inherited from the Enlightenment, to its resilience fostered by the World Wars, France is a living testament to its rich history. As we reflect on the history of France, we gain a deeper understanding of the forces that shape this remarkable nation and continue to shape it today. Remember, history is not just about the past, it's about understanding the present through the lens of the past. It's a conversation between the then and now, and France's history is a riveting dialogue indeed.